greetings you in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Please, please turn to Luke chapter 15, verses 3 to 7. Verse 3. Then Jesus said that, told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost ship until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lordship. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. A beautiful parable. I uh, like verse 7. Where it reads, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. I was posted to uh, St. Mark's Church, Butworth after I finished uh, my uh, postgraduate studies in uh, Birmingham. UK. When I was uh, in Birmingham, uh, the college where I was uh, studying, they used to organize uh, an international day because in the college where I was studying, there were students from uh, many different countries, more than 60 different countries. On, uh, on that day, we were all encouraged to come in, the, in our traditional uh, dresses and the cooks. They cooked food from uh, using recipes from uh, different uh, countries. So when I, after my posting to uh, St. Mark's Church Parliament upon my return from UK, there was uh, a small group, uh, a small congregation made up of members from uh, Indonesia, Sabah and Sarawak. Not a very big congregation, but a very faithful, committed congregation. They used to meet every uh, Sunday for worship. And they were all young people. They were all young people. They were all working. And uh, when I heard about uh, Hari Gawa, Pesta Ka Amata, in fact, that was the first time. I was hearing about uh, Harikawa and Pesta Ka Amata because some of them had invited me to their homes. So I asked them, uh, what is it all about? And then they explained to me about uh, Harikawa and Pesta Ka Amata. So I suggested, why not we uh, organize one event? Why don't we celebrate as a church Harikawa and Pesta Ka Amata? Of course, today, uh, practically uh, the whole nation knows 
about Harikawa and Festa Kamata. Those days uh, not many. But they were excited. They were excited and said, uh, Yes, uh, Padre. So I took it up to the PC meeting, PCC. And I told them, uh, Look, uh, we have this Abbasa Malaysia congregation. They will be celebrating uh, Harikawa and Festa Kamata. Can we do that on a parish level? They've never heard about this uh, Harikawa and Festa Kamata. I explained to them. I told them, let us make that into an evangelistic uh, gathering, not just a celebration. Let us make it uh, into an evangelistic uh, meeting. And of course, then we had to come up with a budget. Keep in mind, the members have never heard about uh, Harikawa and Festa Kamata. So, as we were discussing about the budget, of course, we needed a good sum so that we could uh, decorate the church and uh, also uh, uh, cater food. I, I still remember a very elderly man was very highly respected by the uh, others. He said, uh, why are we uh, so worried about the uh, budget? Let us be generous. And he went on to say, even if one person, after attending the uh, event, should come to church, whatever money we spend is worth. I was really touched. I was not expecting a, a group of people to start coming to church after attending the event. He said, even if one new member, after attending the church, after attending the event, should come to church. We should be grateful to God, and the money spent is worth what? Is worth. I thank God. Of course, on that day uh, was the first time that we were organizing. Of course, members were excited from the English and Tamil congregation. We did not get that many uh, East and West uh, members from uh, East and West Malaysia, but there were a few, not to our expectation. But thank God, after that event, a few, I think uh, around three or four, four of them, decided to attend church services uh, regularly. And they were eventually uh, uh, baptized and confirmed. And I shared that with uh, the elderly uh, gentleman. I still admire him, even though he's with the Lord. He was so excited. He was so excited. He always calls me Wicca. It's worth Wicca. Yes, sir, it was worth spending all the money. And uh, this verse uh, came to my mind. It says, uh, there will be great rejoicing in heaven. Yes, my friends, uh, sometimes, uh, we, sometimes we can be uh, in the name of being uh, careful. We may be too careful to spend money on uh, mission evangelism I think we must be we must have one thing in mind people the church must always be prepared to invest the money on uh, people to bring the good news of God to those who have not yet heard about him the church should never at any time be, uh, uh, should never stitch on uh, spending money on uh, mission work, on evangelistic uh, missions. Now, 
It's only when that we are prepared to spend our money. Now, by spending our money on evangelism and uh, evangelistic work on missions, it is an expression because money has a very strong hold. Money can literally control not only an individual but also a church. But we must be prepared to uh, submit the blessings that God has blessed us, especially money, into the hand of God and allow God the Holy Spirit to guide us to use the wealth, to use the money for the extension of God's kingdom. We may come up with uh, the buildings. But I'm always convinced. Yes, uh, big church buildings may, they're definitely a testimony to people living around. But the greater testimony is the kind of life the people who worship within the four walls of that building. The kind of witness, witnessing life they live when they get out of uh, the church building. I'm not sure how much rejoicing there will be when a new building is dedicated. Of course, we dedicate a church building for the glory of God. I'm not sure how much of rejoicing there will be in heaven. The Bible does not talk about uh, angels rejoicing when a new building is dedicated for the glory of God. A new church is dedicated. But the Bible does say that when one sinner repents, there will be great rejoicing in heaven. I'm not against uh, church buildings. I'm not against it. Church buildings are a testimony on their own. But our focus should be uh, people. We should uh, invest the money that God showers upon the church. We should use that money to reach out to the people outside the four walls of church because it is only it's by conviction from uh, Luke 15 uh, verse uh, 7 it is by conviction it is only when a sinner repents there will be great rejoicing in heaven so can we use our financial resources for the extension of God's kingdom to reach out to those who are outside the four walls of the church. God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.